huge changes because of the pandemic and the future will never really truly be the same, but employers and employees can learn to adapt and overcome. And a conference series called From Day One is here to show them how. Yeah, it's an all encompassing workplace seminar happening in LA tomorrow. From Day One co-founder and chief content officer, Steve Kep is here live to tell us all about this and how people can prepare for the workplace tomorrow. How you doing? Pretty good. Thank you. Hi, Hi, Pedro. Hi, nice to have you. Okay, so Thank obviously you. the pandemic isn't the only concern here. Um, employees and employers face in today's market. There's there's still more that we have to consider, right? Right. Um, about like in this past year, there was just such a struggle for talent that companies were competing with each other and just throwing everything that they could at to get to get people. There was a labor shortage. Now things have slowed down a little. Um, and there have been layoffs, and so now employees who were doing the great resignation and being restless are not quite so restless anymore. They're seeking more stability yeah. than they were. Um, so They yeah, want to get so. out there. There's also a, high, a hybrid workplace, right, uh, right. for protocols, finding that work-life balance, the recession that's possibly looming. So tell yeah. us what exactly is from day one and what can okay. people expect to see from it? Sure. We're a conference company. We're about four years old, uh, based in Brooklyn, New York. And we call ourselves a forum on corporate values. And what that means in principle is that, that we, we look at how companies and big employers can build a strong relationship with their workers and their communities too. So those are the main stakeholders that we look at. And our, our audience is mainly HR professionals, mm. which has become, you know, the center of a lot of things in the last few years. HR professionals, but also people that are looking for jobs can also come to this conference as well and meet those HR professionals, correct? It, that's possible too. It's mostly, it's mostly for leaders and decision makers, folks who are like, for example, head of diversity, equity, and inclusion, mm -hmm. or head of talent acquisition at a company. So it's, it's mostly professionals. Right, uh, so with so many people working from home now, um, how do you address things like equity and, and maintaining productivity from home? Well, that's a huge point of tension right now because we used to have this structure that was kind of a rhythm, nine to five, Monday through Friday. You know, you, you know what was going to happen when and didn't really have to think about it. And now people are making up their own, you know, flexible work schedules. And the question for managers is, well, how flexible do you have to be? And when do people come in? And so all the rules are still being worked out. And that's pretty stressful um, for people. Yeah, speaking of stress, everybody's always talking about the looming recession that's yeah. possibly there. So how can employees and managers feel comfortable in the workplace knowing that a recession is possible and that could impact their jobs? Well, there is a, well, first of all, they can just stay in close touch. Don't, don't drift away, even though people are hybrid. If you get too remote, you know, there's a sense that you're not connected to your, your colleagues and all that. There is a, something that, there's a new catchy thing uh, called um, a career cushioning, which is just another real uh, name for having a plan B. You know, keeping your network going, thinking about, well, if you do get laid off, what might you do? So that there's, I think, just being prepared is good. You know, we hear a lot of this, and, and we talked about this, um, not just career cushioning that sounds com comfy and, and yeah. you told us what it means, but also the fact that um, when you listen to some financial news, they're talking about the bottom line and, and that come January, the, the shareholders really are the ones that need right. to be, you know, appeased. And so there could be a 20% cut in the workforce for, for many of these companies that trade yeah. publicly. And that's what a lot of people are afraid of. And then what happens to that 20%? How do they um, start to you know, move into 2023 with mm -hmm. that looming over their heads? It is. Well, it's, it's, companies are in a squeeze now because not only are they going to give out a, a recent poll of uh, employers said 5% raises next year. So that's more cost. Healthcare costs are going up. A lot of their other costs too, material supplies. So, so yeah, they are cut, they are, some are cutting back. Um, and that makes people, makes people anxious. Um, there are also, there is a huge disparity in the labor force because while well, you've seen the big tech cutbacks, mm -hmm. we're still a million sh uh, short on nurses and two million mm -hmm. short of uh, workers in cybersecurity. There's a lot of fields that actually do need people now. They need uh, people. Yeah, they need yeah. people. I, just one last thing though. I think that it's interesting that a lot of the people that did the quitting, you know, that mm -hmm. mass exodus, uh, that now that the, the workforce is lacking the talent in those 
specific sectors, right? Yeah. I mean, it is you're hiring people that you have to retrain and so forth. I mean, it's become more complicated, really, for the employers, right? Indeed, indeed. And during the past year, it was all about finding the talent. Now it's about retaining the talent because it's really expensive. If you have people who are skilled who left, um, you have to retrain people, and that's expensive. So, it's usually more expensive to get new employees or get yeah. new customers versus retaining yeah. over time. Thank you so much for being here with us. I, this is you know, you. Uh, super exciting. You broke it all down. We appreciate it, Steve. Uh, great to be here. Thank <laughs> you, Steve. And from day one, conference starts tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. in the Hudson Loft in downtown Los Angeles. It runs until 5.30 in the evening. It's one day only, and you can get more information from... Uh, from day one.com slash conferences or head over to ktla.com. We have a link there that you can follow. And Steve, thanks again for being here. Thank you. All right. Been a pleasure.